So I hit send. <laughs> And this is where like it all goes downhill. Oh my God, this was where this is where it gets crazy. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is JC and I have another fun Bumble horror story for you guys. If you didn't see my last video, make sure to go check that out because I did talk about, I did already film this and I messed up, but now I'm doing a redo. But in that video, I also give a little disclaimer saying that this story was from a few years ago where I wasn't as like confident in myself and I may not have been as communicative to the people I was talking to as well. I've gotten a lot better about that, but that's just kind of like a heads up as to why I didn't call these people out a little bit sooner. Cause I was still learning, I was still new to the dating game. So that's kind of why. But if you like these kind of story times, make sure to hit the like button below and throw me a sub, you know, come hang out with us. We're, we have fun here. I'll give you more story times if I know that you guys like them. So make sure to like and subscribe and let's just get started with this Bumble horror story. So about two and a half years ago, I was living with my parents and I joined the dating game. I hopped on Bumble, I was swiping away because I wanted validation, you know, cause you kind of do when you join dating apps. But I also was looking to, you know, meet new people, go out on dates and kind of have fun. I wasn't in that mindset that I wanted to like hook up with people because what am I gonna do? Be like, oh, come back home with me and we can sneak upstairs while my mom watches Jimmy Fallon. Like that doesn't sound fun to me. So that wasn't what I was really looking for. So I did just wanna go on dates. However, what I found by being on Bumble is that people don't even want it to do that. They kind of just wanna like talk, get some validations, be like, you're hot, no, you're hot. And then you guys never talk again. And so I kind of realized that after being on Bumble for a few months that I wasn't actually meeting up with these people, which is what I wanted to do. I don't like small talk. I want to go out and do fun activities and do fun things. So I was at a point where I was like, oh my gosh, it is a Friday night. I just want to go out tonight. I just want to go out and have fun. Let me hop on Bumble and see if there's anyone who wants to join me because I just want to go out. So I start swiping away as you do. I match with a cute boy and I do my regular screener questions like, what do you do for work? What do you do for fun? You know, making sure they're a real person and that we could actually connect on some level if we were to meet in person. So after only talking for like literally just a few messages, I say, hey, I'm looking to actually go shoot some pool tonight. Would you want to join? And he goes, yeah, I'm down after work. Like I don't get off until eight, is that fine? And I was like, that's perfect. They don't open up till eight anyway. So there was this bar in my hometown that was like a bar and like billiards, like pool kind of billiards. And I thought it'd be fun, like a fun place to go out on a first date, get some drinks and just like do an activity, you know, no strings attached. I just wanted to go out. So I was like, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, here's my number, like text me and we can kind of like coordinate all of the details. So that's kind of where it all started because I was getting a little impatient with the dating game and I just wanted to make sure that I like secured a date that we were going out and then I can kind of like plan for it. From there, I was just kind of like, all right, we can just like continue to get to know each other tonight. You know, like I feel like I've vetted you out enough that I'd feel comfortable with you and we would have a good time. So about five minutes later, my phone starts ringing and it's an unknown number. And I was like, I wonder if that's him. I'm not going to answer it because I don't answer unknown phone calls. So that's whatever. So it goes to voicemail. He leaves me a voicemail saying like, hi, JC, this is Oh, I didn't even give him a fake name. I always give fake names. He will be named Henry. <laughs> so Henry leaves a voicemail and he says, Hey, JC, this is Henry. Like, just wanted to call um, and make sure that you're a real person, that I can kind of like confirm that you're a girl, that like you are who you say you are before we meet up tonight. So I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. You know, maybe I should do more of that, you know, kind of like further confirm their identity. I never, I think it's because I don't like talking on the phone. I am one of those people that hate talking on the phone. You literally have to make an appointment with me if you want me to answer to talk. I just don't like it. Plus it's also like, I I lived with my parents at the time and like, I don't want them walking by my room going, is she talking to a boy right now? What are they talking about? How scandalous. Like, I don't know, I just don't like talking on the phone. But I was like, all right, that's a good safety measure. Let me give them a call back. So I call him back and I'm like, hi, Henry, like this is JC, I'm a girl, like I'm real sort of thing. And he goes, oh, okay, cool. So what are you up to right now? And I was like, well, I'm working from home right now. It is a Friday, like during the day I'm working. Uh, and that's kind of it. And he's like, cool, cool, me too. He, I guess worked at like batting cages or something like that. 
and he was saying like he gets off at eight, blah, blah, blah. And then he was just like, yeah, today's been kind of a crazy day. Like this happened, this happened. Also like this happened yesterday. And I was like, cool, cool, uh-huh. He's like, yeah, so what do you like to do for fun? And at this point I'm like, why are we doing this? Like I'm busy, like we can get to know each other tonight. Like, I don't know, I didn't want to do all that small talk, especially over the phone. And I was like, oh, I like to do this. Hey, um, I actually have to go, like I have a meeting, I'm working right now, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll see you tonight and we can finish catching up then. And he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, call me when you're off of work and like we can keep talking. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> like, that's weird. And <laughs> I was just like, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, like, well, I'll talk to you later, bye. So we hang up and like he continues to text me, like he's still texting me things. And in my head, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that like he's still trying to get to know me. He's still trying to make sure that this is safe. And again, I'm kind of forgiving him for that because I'm like, oh, I should be doing this too. But I think I was just at that point where like I was getting impatient with Bumble. I was getting annoyed that I had to keep doing all this small talk before even confirming that I liked the person by meeting in person. So that was just me. That was just me. So we're still texting like, yeah, my favorite color is green and I like the Los Angeles Dodgers. Like, what do you want from me, sir? So I told him like he was asking what time I normally get off and I said, well, like it kind of just depends on what kind of work I get done for the day. Usually around like five or so, but I'm gonna go grab dinner with my mom right afterwards. And so he texts me like whatever and I said, hey, like I'm about to go to dinner with my mom. Like I'll talk, to, I'll see you tonight at eight. And I said, just meet me here at this place at 8 p.m. And he goes, oh, okay, like, call me when you're done with dinner. And I was like, that's the second time he said to, like, call him after something. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, no, that's weird. Like, that's a weird thing to say. Like, I'll message you when I'm done doing what I'm doing. So I hadn't, like, texted him back for a few hours because I really was working, I really was busy, and I really was going out to eat with my mom. I had a missed call from him between 5 and 6 o'clock, which... I thought was weird because I told him like, well, I get off work, but I'm already doing this. And then I was also like, why are you calling me again? Like, why are you, why are you still trying to establish that form of communication? Like you can still text me. I can respond to you by text, but I just don't get why he called. That to me was kind of weird. And so then I texted when I'm done with dinner. And at this point it was like, maybe like 6 30 ish. And I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to start getting ready. But I was starting to get kind of off vibes from this guy. And the reason was because he was texting me. And again, we had decided meet there at 8 p.m. He starts asking me, he was like, oh, okay, like, where do you live? And I told him the city that I lived in. Um, and he goes, okay, so that's about like a 10 minute drive for you. I'm about a half hour away. So I'm gonna leave at 7.30. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, be there at eight. That's what I said. So he was just like, okay, um, can you call me like before you leave? So I know we're leaving at the same time. And I'm like, no, no, just meet me there at eight. Like, what's the issue here? And so I started getting these weird vibes that I think he's gonna call me again. And I think I had already expressed to him that like, just meet me there at eight. I'm not gonna call you. I'm having dinner with my mom. Then I'm gonna get ready and head straight there. We can finish getting to know each other. We can finish catching up by then. I'll just see you then. Like I was trying to express that like, I don't, I don't have to call you. I don't have to text you. Like what's the issue here? So I didn't even start getting ready. I mean, I showered and like I did like some light makeup, but for the most part, I was just like sitting on my, my bed, scrolling through Instagram going, if at 7.30 he like calls me or texts me and says like, hey, are you leaving? Are you sure kind of thing? Then I'm probably gonna cancel because something, something was giving me off vibes. And I think it's because he was just messaging me so much in the span of like the six hours we had even swiped yes on each other. So sure enough, 7.30 rolls around, I'm holding my phone and it starts vibrating and it's him. He is calling me again. And I'm just thinking, golly, in the span of the eight hours that we had literally swiped yes on each other, he had called me three times and separately told him, told me to call him three times, which I just thought was like, okay, you are coming off way too strong. This is like kind of to the point of like being possessive or manipulative. I didn't even really know how to articulate what that made me feel. It just gave me the icks. Like that's just weird, dude. I haven't even met you yet and you're coming off this strong. So I kind of just let it ring. I kind of just let it ring. And then I start typing a text to him. While I'm typing the text, sure enough, I get another phone call from him. It starts ringing, it starts ringing. He doesn't leave a voicemail either time and he doesn't like send me a text at all. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is weird. Like this is kind of weird. So I send him a text and I say, 
Hey, Henry, just want to let you know, I don't think I'm comfortable going out with you tonight. I think that you have called me or told me to call you several times, and it's just coming off a little bit too strong for me. It just feels a little bit possessive, and I just don't think I'm comfortable. I tried to say it in the most diplomatic way poss possible, which I'm actually really proud of myself because, again, back in this time, if you saw my other story time, I kind of like felt bad about speaking my mind or I felt like, oh, I'm going to be hurting their feelings. Like I, I kind of owe it to them to go on this date since I had already gone through this whole process. I established the date. I told him I would be there. So I did feel bad. But in my defense, and I think you guys could agree with this, he was giving off really weird vibes. Like, I don't know. I didn't feel like in danger necessarily at this point. It was just like, okay, dude, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. So I hit send. <laughs> And this is where like it all goes downhill. Oh my God, this was where, this is where it gets crazy. I kind of like sit back and I remember it was funny because I remember like undressing from like my cute date outfit and I was literally like putting on sweatpants and a sweatshirt when my phone just starts, all of these texts start coming in. So like in all caps, he was just going off on me so hard, calling me names that I've never been called before. Just like, you effing B word. I can't say this, I don't wanna get demonetized, but just like, you effing B word. I can't believe what a see you next Tuesday you turned out to be. I asked you to call me so that we could show up at the same time and I wasn't sitting at the bar like an effing idiot. I thought it'd be considerate of you to let me know when you'd arrive, when you were on your way, so I wasn't sitting all alone looking like a fool in a bar that I've never been to. I'm already halfway there and now you're gonna cancel on me? You effing SOB blah 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 blah. Just one text after the other after the other in all caps. And I reacted in a way that was halfway like, oh my God, this is hilarious and ridiculous. And then halfway like fear, because I have never been spoken to like that. I have never been called those words before, especially in a manner that was, I thought they'd take it in a way of like, whoa, I'm sorry that I came off too strong, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that I was like, hey, you're kind of scaring me. You're, com you're coming off a little strong and they prove it. I was kind of scared. So I send back one more text and I say, I'm sorry, like I thought you would just want to know that you were making me uncomfortable and maybe you would kind of like reflect within and think, whoa, what did I do to make her feel this way? My bad, I apologize, good luck sort of thing. I was giving him way too much of the benefit of the doubt because then text, 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 another one. And at this point I was kind of like, my panic mode started to kick in where I was like, oh, he has my number. He knows what city I live in. So I just immediately blocked him. I blocked him and I've never done that before. Like I was like, how do I actually block a number so that way they can't like call or text me? I'm kind of bummed I did that because I didn't get screenshots of those messages because I was just kind of like, again, in the bedroom of my parents' house going, oh my God, my mom's going to be so disappointed in me that I was going to go meet with a stranger tonight and that I gave him my phone number and he's going to come and unlife the whole family. So it was pretty alarming. The other crazy thing that happened after this was, again, he was just like texting me all these like awful, awful things. And I was just like so surprised by it. He found me on Instagram, not five minutes later, adds me on Instagram and I have a public profile so you can still message me even if you don't follow me. And he just started same thing going off on me. And the interesting thing about this is that when somebody that does that you don't actually follow messages you, it goes into a different inbox. So it doesn't go into your main inbox. And I had notifications turned off when it goes into like my external senders inbox. So I didn't actually see these messages until days later. And that kind of re-sparked my fear because all those days in between, I was kind of just like living my life, you know, geotagging where I was. I was kind of just like posting stories of like, here's where I am today. Here's the coffee shop I went to. Here's where I went and got lunch. That like my heart dropped when I saw that he was messaging me those vile things again. Cause I was like, oh, what if, I led him right to where I was. What if I, like, he has been following me this whole time. What if he finds me? So of course I blocked him then and kind of like made sure that he couldn't see my profile. I muted everything that I could post from him. But I think the crazy part was that he didn't, he wasn't like gonna stalk me or come and like take his revenge. He was just, he just wanted to express how mad he was because I really did let it get down to the wire before canceling on him. But I truly hope he was sending those messages and then maybe like a day or two later, he kind of cools off and goes, oh, see, I was scaring her. 
and I gave her a reason why she should have been scared because could you guys imagine if I had actually gone on a date with this person? Imagine if we had gone and shot some pool, we had some drinks, and then he tried to like kiss me at the end of the night and I kind of like refuted his kiss. He could have gotten angry, he could have gotten violent. He had me alone in a place that, you know, neither of us had been before. Something bad really could have happened. Or we could have gone on a date. He would have learned a lot more about me probably on that date. Maybe asked for a second date, like over text over the next days. I say no. And then he's even more mad of, wow, you led me on during this date. Like, how could you? Blah, blah, blah. I think he really proved why he was making me uncomfortable because he really showed his true colors that he was an angry, aggressive, and possessive person. Not only that, but how narcissistic of you just to like have those thoughts of like, I called you so much and I wanted you to call me. So I wasn't sitting there alone for five whole minutes. I'm sorry, that was your issue of why you had me call you three times. That's kind of weird. So after that, I really didn't think about him ever again. He never tried reaching out to me and I wasn't really concerned about it because I knew he wasn't that angry that I like rejected him. I think he just wanted to like express his anger at the lateness of it and then kind of like move on with his own life because those Instagram messages I did see, they were just from 10 minutes after, like he was already sending all of those text messages and I blocked him. It wasn't like a continuous thing. It's not like he continued to do it in those days that he was still unblocked and could message me. Hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, I like to do like a word of warning or a lesson with all of these story times in that I don't think I ever tried doing what I did with him where, hey, I'm bored tonight. Let me see if I can get some random spontaneous stranger to go out with me <laughs> because I learned, yikes, JC, that could have turned out way worse. You really need to be more mindful about online dating. You really do need to vet people out, make sure you're completely comfortable with them. I also think Again, because I was living with my parents and I was trying to be spontaneous and cool, I probably would have gone on that date and not told anybody because I would have said like, I'm going out with friends or like, I'm going out to do this because I didn't want people to know that like, I was kind of being unsafe in a way that I was going out with strangers. So please, if you are going about the online dating world, make sure to text your friend like, hey, here's where I'm going. I'll text you when I get home. Here's their name. Any other things you can tell them about it. Just for peace of mind for you and just for safety because you never know if you're gonna go out with a crazy dude that's gonna flip out if you reject him. And lastly, if you watch all of my Bumble story times, um, I love telling those and you guys love when I tell them. You may notice that all of them are from several years ago. And the reason for that is because I have gotten a lot smarter about dating. I have, you know, learned to properly vet people, make sure that I'm going to actually connect with them or have a good time with them, that I haven't had too many horror stories because I've just learned to date better. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to give you guys more stories, and I do have more coming your way that I think you'll enjoy. But I just want to make sure that you know that dating, especially in the online landscape, can be unpredictable, it can be scary, but it's also really fun. I only give you guys the horror stories because if I, like the fun stories, they're not, they're not funny. <laughs> like they're not crazy. They don't make you go, whoa. They're just like, I went on a good date. You know, it didn't work out, but we had a good time or like we dated for a little bit. Those aren't the funny stories to tell. So please don't think that like I'm out there risking my life all of the time. No, I have learned to date better and I think that that's important to note if you are kind of like exploring the online dating world to just be safe, to just not let people walk over you and to learn about yourself while you're learning about other people. Wow, that was a pretty good line. That was pretty good. So stay safe out there, kids. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so I know you like these stories because I do have a few more. I have more if you guys want to hear them. But I thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Toodles! Because it was one of those like cool like billiards. I was about to. <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna do this for billiards, like you know, pool stick. That's just not not what I mean, everyone. <laughs>